Hello everyone and welcome back to the Gaming Droid and the Free Trial Dory. Today we are looking at Cabal's Magic and Battle. This is a pre-release version of the game for Steam. The game is currently available on Apple and uh, Android phones as well as via the Google App Store. Uh, but it's coming to Steam soon and I've been given early access to the Steam version to do a couple of videos and I'll be doing a few videos with some of the Legion members as well. This is by Koo Gaming. Um, or Koo Gaming, and it's spelt K-Y-Y, where the, stu the studio is spelt K-Y-Y Games, um, but it's a Finnish word and it's, it's pronounced Koo, as in moon or Koo. Um, and this is a, it's, it's kind of got like a 1930s, 1940s gangster, sort of like mob style feel, um, similar to certain kinds of Call of Cthulhu element um, things. It's got a lot of fantasy introduced into it. Um, so let's have a, just a quick talk about the settings and things. It's got very simple settings, sound, resolution, windowed and quality, um, but it's a card game so it doesn't need a huge array of settings. It's also got a community tab which lets you interact with the different elements of the community. It's got a leaderboard of course and the leaderboard comes for the different uh, sort of skill levels. I am currently ranked 1200 and the lowest ranked person in the top 100 is 1,245. There's quests, starter quests to uh, play. There are, of course, huge numbers of other quests. And all of these gain you influence and a pack if you win that one, win three matches with Bear Claw Brotherhood. And then there is your profile, which just tells you where you are and what your rank is and lets you change your password and things. So. Before we play a game, and I'll be playing a game against the computer to start with because there aren't many people online because it's not released yet on Steam, um, I'll just show you the store. The store allows you to buy purchase, uh, purchase boosters, which are card packs, we'll open some of those in a bit, and they are primal boosters for the Bear Claw or the Danan, Dominion boosters for the Zephyr or the Veri, and the Nether boosters for the Osiris or the Dragon. So it divides the boosters up into two groups um, per booster, so you, you know what you're getting. It then has heroes, and the heroes are drawn from history, from uh, Celtic culture, from Japanese culture, from Finnish culture, from Nordic culture. So you've got Rasputin, you've got Baba Yaga, Boris Kane, Morgan Le Fay, Queen Mab. That comes from a Queen Mab was originally in a uh, Shakespearean or um, yeah Shakespearean play, I think. Uh, Marine and Viglut, Tanhari. Then you start to get into some of the sort of like Egyptian. And then you get into the Japanese ones. You've got Elder Zangyao, and you've got Yu Ming, that's Chinese and Japanese. You've got Samuel Ong, Alistair Crowley. So Alistair Crowley was a real person. You've got Imhotep, of course, Egyptian. So there's a whole array of different heroes you can play, and the heroes have abilities that you can see. And then you have decks. And the different decks are just pre built groups for each of the, the different um, sort of groups. You've got the Bear Claw, Danny, Order of the Zephyr, you've got the Virgil, the Vril Society, the Dragon and the Sons of Cyrus. So you've got each of the different groups that you can buy a pre-built 30 card deck of. And then you've got two game modes. You've got Classic, and in Classic mode you are playing with a loyalty cost. So they have a loyalty cost to play and you then have to sort of play that in. And then you've got Modern mode, which is the simpler mode. I'll show you the Classic mode as it's a little bit more complicated. Um, I have been playing some practice in Modern mode. So let's jump into a practice match. As you can see, here we have um, the different cards that I have drawn. And we have my hero with my hero ability. We also have the battle board. And the battle board allows me to... This is my fort. If the fort gets taken, I instantly die. These are the sort of capture points around the board. and. These give me additional resources and these let me spawn monsters in part way across the board. And then you can see a little castle with a 1 and a 60. This is my control. Even if I can't take my opponent's castle, if I can hold these points, so I can hold more of these points than my opponent and I can gather 60 control, then I can win the game. So the basic way to play is you play a character. In this case I'm going to throw out something nice and cheap for my first move. Um, He's cheaper, or sorry, no, he's more expensive because he is the wrong group. So he's from a different clan, and because he's from a different clan, he costs more, hence the loyalty. 
Um, so I'm going to drop him on there, and then I'm going to move to capture this. This gives me one extra resource next turn. So he's dropped a uh, Domalvoy, which is a generate double resource from non-stronghold tiles underneath. So as long as he's sitting there, he's going to gather two instead of one from there, which gives me a disadvantage. So I'm going to try and counter that by quickly moving out with a group of people. And he, even though he costs more, I'm actually going to pop him down as well. So he costs more because he's not from my faction, so I shall pop them out. Now, that's actually taken the, the loyalty costs off the other cards from that faction. So you can see that I actually have cards from that faction on the board. So now this up at the top here, in the top left of the card, has turned the light off, and now he no longer has a yellow number and he's cheaper to play. So I'm going to capture that one, capture that one, and capture that one. Now, this guy could get taken next turn and then he would get the plus two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Morgan Le Fay ability. It costs me two resources and it allows me to boost this character up and draw a card. And that just lets me keep hold of that section. So he's played an Obsessed Monk that cannot be targeted and a Gnome Hero. The Gnome Heroes are quite dangerous because they um, gain abilities each time they capture a tile, gain power each time they capture a tile. One damage to all the units. That would cost me two units and not cost him anything, or cost him one unit. Um, so I'm going to pop that up there. I'm going to boost him with a Lady of the Lake. And then I'm going to boost him again with another Lady of the Lake. And basically I'm just trying to bring him up to the point where I can take over or deal with this issue down here where I've got the Gnome Hero who's going to grow more powerful and the Obsessed Monk who's very dangerous. Um, I'm then actually going to use the Osculum Fame and I'm actually going to boost him again. So he is now strong enough to take these on and win. And you can see at the end of each turn each of these things that we could have owned gain us a little bit of this resource down here, this control. So I'm going to actually pop that uh, Gnomish Hero. I'm going to move the Swarming Lice out and I'm also going to grab myself an extra point of resource and start moving out some Gnomes. Now what these guys can do is these guys can basically reinforce other units. They can make other units more powerful. Which is a great way to uh, boost up units and make make myself um, more sound in dealing with things that are a risk to me. So what can I do here? I'm probably going to lose this match because this guy's gotten into a situation where I'm really going to struggle to deal with him. Exhaust him where he's standing to gain me more control. I'm probably having going to have to go for control victory. Yeah, I thought as much. Ooh. Ah, he took over my castle, of course, because I wasn't protecting my castle properly. So that's a, a practice match. I'll play another match, see if I can uh, beat the computer. In classic mode, because of the loyalty cost for uh, cards, it can be a little bit harder to play. You can play in modern mode, which simply removes the loyalty cost. So you see here the loyalty cost is too neutral. I start with one neutral loyalty cost because of my hero, or sorry, one Danan loyalty cost because of my hero. I need another Danan card on the battlefield to negate that cost. So if I put out a demagog, a demagogue, um, then that negates the loyalty cost there. So it's basically just a case of matching up the tokens to reduce the cost of what you're playing. Um, pigs of Cthulhu adjacent, non-stronghold tiles controlled by the opponent can become neutral. That actually might not be a bad idea because I can actually force his non-stronghold tiles into neutrality and stop him from gaining resources. Um, yeah, that's probably my best bet at the moment. So you see, he can't gain hold of that stronghold now, or that uh, resource tile, because it's, it's um, being protected by my piggies. So this is a does not ah that's also a does not conquer one. 
Slow attack, generate double from s the stronghold, from non-stronghold tile. Okay, so he's generating double capture this from any non-stronghold tile he owns. Now, I want to deal with this one before it gets down to my stronghold. So I'm actually going to invest a lot of resources into boosting this pig and taking out his most powerful unit on the battlefield at the moment. And as with all these games, you can kind of build and boost and... and create your own sort of better decks and things. Swarming lice, just to keep him under control. Ooh, ouch. Um, one thing I would like to see them include is kind of like a... Um, this is what's happened over the last couple of turns. Maybe on the stopwatch, let you click the stopwatch and have a list of what cards have been played recently. So this would basically be a set to zero for us. Do I have an advantage over him at this point? No, I don't. If I do that, and then that, and then do a set to zero, although that's quite expensive. I wonder if I can reduce the cost of that. I can. Ooh, that's not good. Deal one damage to target unit with power two or greater. See, a lot of things go past very fast. It would be nice to have a... Um, this is what's been happening. That was probably a mistake, because he's actually got more generation than me. Do three damage to the target adjacent. The sacrifice. Exhaust and draw a card when you're into... Unit control where you is destroyed, generate. So, okay, that one's got to go down quite quickly. Uh, stop him generating resources from there. Pop that. Ah, once per game exhaust. So that's a unit. Activate ability. Activate ability and deal one damage to target with two power or greater. Activate. Okay, but I, I'm not quite understanding why it's not letting me activate that. Wow, he's just getting all the cards, isn't he? Deal one damage, but gain some extra bonus. This is a rough match. If I pop that there, then that's protected. Still gonna die, that was a miss. Um, ah, they have fast attacks, so they attack first. So it's, it can become quite a fast tactical game. It is a uh, similar thing to sort of a combination of chess and um, yeah, they had the first attack there. Yeah, I've gone with that one as well. It's actually a really very challenging game, and the um, the AI is very very good. I will say that. So what I'll do is I'll finish the video off just by showing you some of the purchasing and unpacking. So if I go over to open packs, actually if I drop into the store first, I will buy myself a deck. So I shall buy myself the uh, dragon deck, I think. 
So for 300 coins I can buy myself a dragon deck. And that gets me a dragon deck and I can also buy myself a dragon booster. And if I pop over to the boosters I will unlock... I can open my boosters. And as with all of these games, we get a selection of different cards. So you can see here the morale system in, in place. You can see the symbols next to this. If I don't have any of the dragon cards on the map, oh no, sorry, any of the uh, Osiris cards, because this is the Osiris symbol, then this will cost two more. If I don't have any of the dragon cards, this will cost one more, and so on, and that includes your hero, so you, your hero basically negates one of these costs. And then you also get a base booster pack as well, one that they just give you for joining in. When a changing show for Conquer the Tile generate one resource, that's quite powerful. All friendly units gain plus one, plus one. Powerful, but expensive if you're not one of the Dani. Uh, that's got toughness, that's good. It's a shield ability. And deal one damage to all units, which you've already seen. The deck building, as you can imagine, very um, similar to standard deck building. They give you a nice deck, which you can see pre-generated here. You can have a look at the mana curve, and it actually uh, divides it up into different kinds of cards. So I've got a couple of um, Osiris cards in here, but they're mainly dragon cards, and I have the Elder Zhan Yao as my hero. And in the deck I've got Young Visionary, which is my basic 1-1. One -one. I've got a slightly more expensive uh, Shang Shanghai Lander, uh, which is a exhaust to generate some resources, pretty common style of card. Then I've got a even more expensive uh, Master of Blades, which is for one resource target to units ability, and that ability costs two more to activate. I've got a spell card, which is Descending Clouds, target units deal no combat damage until the start of your next turn. So you can see that there's a nice array of tactical cards combined with just raw power cards. That has been Cabal's Magic and Battle, and I will be looking at playing some Legion games of this. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.